What's the word for high agreement? This is super important. A lot of times, not only do you have your producer licenses where you're doing it non-exclusive or you have an exclusive, exclusive licenses, but that, now you're getting in a situation where, look, you done sold all these non-exclusive licenses, you're booming. You done sold all these exclusive licenses and you're really booming. And now people are, they're knowing your name. They're seeing Buffon to be everywhere. And they're like, look, bro, I need that thing for myself, man. I need to own that master. Now, I don't want to own it just as a non-exclusive where I can use it. I don't want it just to be the only one. I want to own this beat. Likely what happens in that situation, they'll say, look, I want you to sell me this beat, but at this point, you'll work for hire. What does that mean? A work for hire essentially means that you're transferring your ownership in that master or that sound recording of that beat over to the person and agreeing, hey, I work for you to create this, and now that property is becoming yours. So if you're having a non-exclusive license or an exclusive license where you're just exclusively licensing that beat to them, then work for hire should not be in that agreement. So if you sure understand, look, I'm just licensing this beat to you, Work for hire should not be in that agreement. So if you're just, if it's only your intention to license that beat over, if you see work for hire or transferring 100% ownership, you should look and say, nah, this is something about this isn't right. Come, let me go back to this episode and look at the difference between a non-exclusive and an exclusive producer license and a work for hire agreement. So what you, what you always have to look for is see, look, is there a sale taking place? Am I transferring ownership? Is that my intention to transfer ownership? Okay, this is likely going to be a work for hire agreement. So it's super, super critical when you're going in and you're looking and you're seeing all of the different things to make sure that you're understanding the value of my producer license, which is a non-exclusive or an exclusive, which is what you're selling through the platform. Hey, you can use this for a specified amount of time, but other people can use it. Non-exclusive. Hey. You can be the only one that uses this, but the, the other people that have already used it can still use it exclusive or work for higher agreement. Look, I know you really like this beat. Give me 5,000. You own the master to this beat. I still own you know, my publishing, which I'm going to register with B-Stars Publishing, but you control the sound recording, which we talked about in the, the beginning, and I'm going to work for higher. Very critical, very important. And as a business, as the owner of your intellectual property, which is your real estate, you have to know enough and pay attention enough. That's why I tweeted something. Stay focused, pay attention, pay, pay attention and stay focused because you have to understand. And it's good to have people on your team because you have to be able to understand when to navigate these three. Right. You have to be able to understand, look. I can sell a non-exclusive here. I can sell an exclusive here or I can do a work for hire agreement and sell this beat. And that's going to put me in a good, a good, a good place. So always be paying attention and staying focused, looking for opportunities, but understanding when to use what tools, because that's all we're doing here. We're trying to give you as many tools as possible. But one of the benefits of having tools is, OK, I know when I need to use them. Right. Super critical. 